What's going on, guys? It's the it's the Touchdown Hoedown, one of the many shows I do in a given week. A lot of these NFL shows, I'm here with my buddy John Gold, JD, and uh, he'll be. Uh, we'll introduce him in just a minute. But what you want to know is I'm the Degenerate 75. You see that name right below me? Feel free to go toss a, 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 a follow on Twitter. If you don't know, what we do here is me and my buddy John, we are both high-limit DFS players, specifically at NFL and PGA, and we help break down the slate for people that may be new to this or want to you know, hear the perspective of people that play it at a higher limit. And so that's what we do on this channel. So if you like the cut of our jib, you know, like maybe go like and subscribe uh, to the to the channel here. Because if you don't know, uh, we're independent as shit. You know, no co- no corporate overlords here, no sponsors. So what really helps is you doing that by dropping that follow and that like. Uh, we are going to be talking about the the uh, lineups from last week that were successful. We're going to look at some contest selections, and we're going to break down this week's slate. This is all the preview. You got to make a point to come check us out again on Saturday as we do our final thoughts, right? See, I got the big old schedule right here. Uh, you, we'll do this. This is our preview. Saturday is the final one. We do Monday night football, Thursday night football. Uh, I do college football, and I also do the emergency stream for golf on Wednesday. So there's my schedule. You got to be asking, hey, big guy, what's that big ass will over your shoulder? Well, me and John, every Saturday, we do a drawing, and the winner gets to make a free Millionaire Maker ticket with John and I. We all get together, put our brains together, make the best possible ticket, and we give you half of all the winnings. One of our guys that won the drawing last week, actually, we I think we finished right around the top 1,000 in the Millionaire Maker. It was, an, it was like a three-figure hit, so I got to PayPal some guys some more money. Let's go, Christian. So there you go. That's what we do. If you want to get in that drawing, very simple. Simply just go put in the comments, who is the one stack you love this week? Who is the one stack you're really liking this week? Or if you want to get two names on there, go go like and retweet this over on Twitter. That's all you got to do. Without further ado, let me bring in my partner in crime. Some have called him. The, it just, just you know, he missed the Monday Night Football show, but rumor has it it's just because he was counting all his fucking money that he won at NFL this week. So without further ado, let me introduce John Gold JD. How you doing, brother? What's up, guys? Yeah, it was a close week. I really thought I was going to have like a real screenshot to share this week. Um, had some good ones, had some close calls. But uh, but man, with this slate, we talked about it kind of being a funky slate last week. And it really came through. Um, we're, I think we're going to look at maybe two of my lineups. And you'll see in the two of them that one of them I hit on the outside stack pieces and the other one I hit on the running back pieces. And God, if I had just matched those two up together in some lineups, uh, we, we could have been shipping some stuff. So um, let, me, let, really me ahead, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and piss you off, John. We're going to be looking at one of your lineups because the other one I didn't post because I thought we were in a hurry. So I didn't want to uh, talk about six lineups. So let's talk. That, about, that's all cool. I can I, talk about uh, where I put what, what was in those lineups. It was an 11th place lineup in the uh, hundred dollar single entry spy. Um, the ne- big ones. The never easy to get a top 11 spot. finish in those mother fathers because you only get yeah, one. You only deal. get one entry. I, I th- that's what I've heard in single entry. You only get one. Um, so just real quick, what carried that lineup? I guess you can see on DJ's screen here. This is my uh, seat that won a king of the or my tournament that won the king of the beach seat. Wait, what's so king of the beach? What's back. king of the beach? Quit assuming everybody knows what this shit is. <laughs> king of the beach is the smaller live final that DraftKings runs. So they have their fantasy football world championship, um, which is an awesome tournament, but just a little bit bigger than my bankroll um, because it's a each seat is a 65k seat value. And like when I go after these things, I try to win more than one seat. So like for the fantasy football or fantasy golf world championship, I won four seats, but that seat was only worth like 17k, I think. Mm-hmm. So it's a little more within my bankroll. So the uh, king of the beach is a 6,000 seat value, and it's a smaller live final. So they give a uh, 250 total seats through weeks one through 10 week 11 you play a 250 man tournament with the top 75 advancing to the live final in california um for a shot at i think first place is 200k maybe well, it's 250 everything about that said it sounded awesome until you said in california okay i'm kidding california <laughs> guys i just like to shit on you um okay so let's talk about your lineup here which as you can see was nice uh on this week 169 points nice uh, was uh, quite the lineup because it, there was a lot of landmines this week, a lot of landmines. So uh, go over it. What, do you, what, what were you thinking with this lineup? Yeah, so this one actually got there in a ways that, um, like the pieces that I really wanted to smash didn't get there, right? So you see like the two uh, comeback pieces or my two secondary stack that I really wanted to put in was Cook and Amonra, mm-hmm. and neither one got there. Um, like I think if you watched any of our shows, that was a correlation I was pretty high on. So I was trying to find ways to afford that stack. Um, and so I did that by putting in Damian Pierce, who is cheap value running back. But in my other lineup, I had, um, Patterson and I can't remember my other cheap, um, running back in that one that both smashed. Um, so had I subbed those in, this could have been like a truly win- game winning or GP winning tournament, but our lineup, 
Um, but then I took Devante and paired him, or I took Kurtz and paired him with Devante and Goddard, um, which I think was pretty unique. This was a small field tournament, so I think this one has 200 players in it. Um, and so I felt like just trying to capture all the upside from that game, um, which then I tried to run it back with Samuel to get um, – the ceiling in that one. I, I couldn't afford McLaren, which was my preferred uh, run back in that game. Yeah. Um, so I had to go with Samuel. And then my other value piece that got there was Russell Gage in the late game. And so I flipped and flopped Gage, uh, Perriman, and um, Dobbs in that late matchup. Yeah. And in a lot of spots, I was stacking the late just to have some variability. But this one, I ended up with just the one late um, roster spot. Why, why did you go Pierce over Montgomery? Why didn't you eat the chalk? Like I, I was seeing him 35%, 40% some of the single entry. Why didn't you go there? I axed Montgomery this week. And like, I hate to victory lap an injury. I just wasn't going to play a high owned Montgomery, especially in some of these King of the Beach, which is like every week what I've been targeting. This is actually my first seat, which is pretty frustrating. Um, I'm probably in at 6k at this point. Um, how, might, no, wait, how much is the way. entry on these? This one was, I believe, the $40 one. And it's, okay. what's cool about nice. King of the Beach is all of their tournaments are capped at five max. Mm -hmm. um, even like the they have a $5 one that's capped at five max. So it's like a true parody tournament. Like, I mean, they do have a $500 buy in for a lot of these, but um, it's not like the big dogs. Like, if you look at the Fantasy Football World Championship every week, there's like two 10K buy ins, a 5K buy in. Um, right. Like, the dudes winning a lot of seats in those are really putting up a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Right. Um, and you can win, I think in that one, you can win 17 seats in the big dog. In this one, you can only win five seats total. So even in the main tournament, no one will have more than five seats. Like in the fantasy foot or fantasy golf world championship last year, I ended up with four seats, but like whistles and Peter Gibbons yeah, and like 15. a few of the other studs. Yeah, exactly. They got, they they got, the, bank, they got the, you know, we got bankrolls that would make a lot of people blush. Those guys got bankrolls that, that make us blush. So yeah, exactly. There's so, orders of magnitude here. Yeah. I, um, so let's see here. Uh, Devante, we were both pretty high on him last week. Um, he just made a lot of sense to stack with Jalen, uh, and he was so cheap that you that Jalen could get him and Goddard there. You know, we've said before that we're always a little tentative to double stack Hurts, but when you're going to stack him with cheap options like Devante and Goddard, I mean, that just shows he can get them both there, and uh, they did. It, 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 I, you'll see here on my lineup, I actually stacked him with uh, Jalen Hurts with A.J. Brown, which is hilarious because I usually shit on A.J. Brown, and you usually talk him up as God. And I had a lot of Devontae Smith with Jalen Hurts, just not in my $150 three max here. So this was my line. So you got to McLaren there. Yeah, that was the thing. I really liked McLaren. I, I play Scary Terry more than anybody. I'm <laughs> just a slut for the guy. Um, no, I think he, he's super talented. Yeah, he never he never gets the 35 point weeks I need, but he always just seems to get enough to to get there that I'm like, I can't let you go, Terry. I can't let you go. And so I keep playing him. So I here's what I went back and I looked at in the in the past 21 weeks. I'm a GPP bro, right? I only play GPP. So the 18 weeks last season and three so far this week, I have actually profited seven of 21 weeks which is one third of the weeks which is a very high rate for gpps right but i i have not hit any monsters nothing over fifteen thousand dollars and so i gotta ask you because i really i need some counseling more than anything why is it that i feel like i only make good lineups at uh nfl and i'm not making these great ones and taking down the 150k so i, I guess i would have two possible answers one i would say that 20 weeks is like a super small sample size and that um, like being profitable over that time period is pretty awesome, but could like easily be variance positive or negative. So not hitting a top like 0 0.001 lineup to put you in profit. Like I wouldn't necessarily be frustrated over a 20 week sample. Mm. Um, the fields point. in NFL are just so huge. So basically what you're talking about in 20 games is half of a golf season, but mm. more so than that, the fields are so much bigger than golf fields that it's like, you know, it's, it's the variance is so much higher. And so in any given like snapshot of 20 games, like anyone, like the best players in the world could be wildly negative. And so um, like variance is a bitch in NFL because of field size, because of the variability of the sport. Um, so I, as long as you're like in lineups that like are meeting, are meeting the criteria, like you have enough leverage in there, like you're putting some low on guys and you're not just eating every chalk uh, thing that comes out there. You're making lineups that make sense in regards to like the, the you know, stack with a bring back. Um, right sub stacks, that kind of stuff. I wouldn't be stressed about not hitting uh, like the big dollar scores in that time period because that, that's like a really short period. And I'm sure if you look back at your PGA results and only looked at a 20 week sample, right. or like, like a half a season the field size. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, even if you think the field size into account, look at 12, look at any 12 week period in PGA, yeah. like, cause that's scaling it for a little bit of the field size. Right. And I guess in any, I would guess in any 12 week period, you probably have a wildly profitable 12 week periods and wildly not profitable 12 oh, week periods. Faux shizzle. 
So yeah. uh, just a couple thoughts on this lineup. Uh, as you can see, I obviously did the hurt stack. I brought it back with McLaurin. So similar to what you did, if Dalvin Cook doesn't get hurt, you got to wonder if this lineup, you know, if he gets to 25 or something, maybe he breaks out. I, I ran so much for net and ran it back with Dobbs. I loved that one. I thought Lenny was safe for like a 15 point floor. As you can see, I was wrong, but Dobbs definitely got there. And then if you're wondering, uh, why did I play a one-off cook and a one-off Holland? Well, it's simple for cook. I wanted to have access to that Minnesota Detroit game, but I didn't want to eat the same chalk that everybody else was. So I just went in there and got a piece that I thought would be at least a medium owned piece in that game. Cause I wanted access to the highest scoring game. So that's how I got on cook and Holland's was simple. I needed a fucking punt to save me some money and he was 3,300. So I played him and, uh, he, he, uh, he exceeded expectations with 10 X. Yeah. I X'd Matt Collins. I was a little frustrated at his outcome. Um, I, we talked at length about playing these like guys, these cheap wide receivers that open up late in the week in value. And to me, like my thought was there was plenty of other places that target share could go that it didn't need to go to Mac. So mm -hmm. I didn't play Mac. I thought his ownership was going to get out of hand here. It was 12% in this $150 buy-in, which actually isn't like horrible, but for a low price wide receiver, that's sort of getting kind of chalky. Yeah. I saw him at 15 and some of my high dollar stuff. Um, and I know a few of the other, um, like pretty respected sites, like had him pretty high in their projections. So he was popping in a lot of optimals and like, I got to the point where I was building that I just decided to fully take him out of my player pool. Mm -hmm. Um, I liked my builds a lot with him in him. I just, um, I just thought there was like his range of outcomes. I, one, I didn't put 30 in his range of outcomes. I'll be honest. Like I had his ceiling range of outcome probably in the twenties. Yeah. I would have um, guessed 18 would have been his max. Yeah. Exactly. And I honestly had more of his range of outcomes in like the zero to four right. range um, in what I was building. So let's look at the winner of the of the 150 last week. The winner had a beautiful lineup this week. I got to tell you, man, this is this one. This one's crazy. I, I, I don't think I would have ever got there on this lineup. Right. Hey, so real quick, let's use this as an opportunity to talk through this one-offs because there's been some really good talk in our in the Discord about it. And this lineup's pretty exemplary of like this kind of one-off grossness, right? Yep. Um, and so I think like it, I think it is still fundamental that you should be stacking and bringing it back, right? And so in any given spike week, you're going to see the top of these big field tournaments probably make up more often than not these random one-off teams. Mm -hmm. Like here we have Hurts naked, right? Yeah, we've got Hertz naked with a bring back in Samuel, which like, I mean, Hertz, if you're going to play someone naked, it's probably Hertz, but I still don't like it. Um, and so I, I think there's an opportunity to hit that truly ceiling. Like if you, no, 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 he has Devonte. he has Devonte Smith. Oh, I, oh, your screen is so fuzzy on mine. Oh, okay. I see it there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he didn't run it naked. So we want a single sack. Like that's plenty fine. So that, he ran a really fine. skinny one and brought it back with Samuel. So that part makes sense. Yep, and then is there any other correlation in here? Let's I didn't see. I didn't see, I didn't see any other ones. Vegas, uh, Chargers, yeah, Detroit, Atlanta. Yeah, no, it looks like all one-offs. Which I mean, that, that's fine, and it's like the highest ceiling outcome, right? If you run to your optimizer and just hit build on like based on ceiling, your ceiling builds will all be most likely nine random guys. They won't have any correlation in it, and if right. it is, it's just random. Um, but like. While that is the highest ceiling outcome, that is a lower chance to hit. Like, I, and a lot of guys have talked about this, so I'm not saying anything new here. When you correlate, you're trying to reduce the things you get right. You're saying, I think this game goes off in this way, and if if I'm correct, I only need to get my other six pieces or five pieces, you know, whatever it is, right. And then I'm putting the sub stack in that I think this game goes off in this way, and if I'm right, now I only need to get my main stack, my sub stack, and my three other pieces right. Um, and you're just trying to limit what you get right without reducing your ceiling too much. Plus, the guys get there together. So when Devontae Smith goes off, presumably, unless Hurts gets injured, Hurts threw him the ball. Yep. Um, and so, like, I think that's still a fundamental piece that I'll be including. And I know there's been a lot of discussion, and I would encourage everyone to spend your gambling dollars how you want to spend your gambling dollars. But for me, in terms of making it to the top of these tournaments or trying to give myself the best shot at making this to the top of these tournaments, I'm still playing at least a wide receiver quarterback stack and a bring back. And I'm still playing a second stack in all my lineups. Um, it just is what it is. That's that, why that's we don't, that's why we're not play. looking at the Millie maker winners. Cause so often it's a fucking, it'll be like eight random pieces, right? Like a, maybe one stack, like a mini stack no bring back. And then eight, you know, eight uh, variables that you have to have in there. And those hit. And a lot of people are like, see, y'all don't know what you're talking about with your stacks. But like what the point I would make for you is like that guy is basically playing a scratch off. I want my lineups to be well correlated. So I have to have fewer things go right for me to win. But more importantly, 
Um, even when I don't win a GPP, you can still see I had a nice hit. I finished 34th place, which is still good because I had a nice correlated lineup and I didn't need as many things to go right. It would have been nice to win it all, but it, you know what? A lot of guys like that that are just playing a bunch of random uncorrelated lineups, that's not sustainable in the long run. I'm just going to tell you. Yeah, and it's not giving you your biggest path to, like, giving yourself the best shot at getting there. Like, can right. it get there? Absolutely, but it's not your best shot at getting any, there. Al almost any lineup can get there. Playing Jamal Williams. If you have enough vision to know, uh, you know, that that, that Swift was going to be limited and Jamal Williams was going to be a touchdown vulture at the goal line, well, good fucking for you. But, like, I, I, I just was uh, never going to get there. I don't think there. that was actually a bad play, honestly. I, I actually, in hindsight, I was, like, thinking through that Jamal play, and I sort of like it. Like, we knew Swift was coming in already a little You were the one up. selling me on playing Swift. Oh, Talk. I spent my money on Swift. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying, like, if you were thinking through how that guy got there, I mean, who knows? This could be a brain dead person that just clicked buttons. But presuming this person was a thinking person in constructing this lineup, I mean, they basically thought Swift is coming in banged up. The team already is giving Jamal goal line work, a little bit of passing work that he used to do in Green Bay. Why aren't we giving him a shot? And he was cheap. You needed value on this slate. I, I mean, I actually, how I don't cheap, like that. How I would cheap rather was he? With him what back. was his salary? Do you remember? He should have been sub 5K, I'm guessing, or maybe 5,200, something like yeah, that. I don't know. I, I would have rather just went with Pierce or somebody like that, but whatever. Okay. Uh, hey, new guy. Welcome, brother. I'm glad you're here. Uh, the, the the channel's been blowing up. Go like and subscribe, like I told you. Maybe go drop that uh, Twitter follow. See, Degenerate75. John, what's your Twitter? We never plug your Twitter. What, what Who are you on Twitter? Let's get you some people. I'm the same old, same old. I'm at John Gall JD everywhere. There it is. It'll also be in the description if you don't know how to sp spell John Gall JD, you dumbass. All right. Uh, some quick contest selection here. Uh, main slate, what do we got here? Uh, it, it, it's basically the normal contest. And if you don't know, generally our thesis is this. Uh, play in uh, tournaments that have solid payout structure, which means, you know, preferably less than 20% to first. You also want 10th place to be roughly 10% of first. And most importantly, at least to me, is play in contests that the number of entries are capped. I really like single entries, three maxes, five maxes, and 20 maxes, because then you're playing the same number of lineups as everybody else in that contest. And for me personally, I love the ownership pools even more. I love seeing a 40% owned David Montgomery in single entries. So that's why I play those, because I like to fade donkey chalk. If you don't know, that's kind of the brand is fading donkey chalk. Um, John, uh, if, if, do you have any uh, advice on what people should play this week? Like this $1 20 max is a pretty damn good contest. Yeah, I think it's it's completely bankroll dependent and bankroll should be like when we talk about your bankroll, I would think of it as like how many gambling dollars am I willing to spend on NFL this week uh, or on this season? I mean, if I lost, you know, if I lost $10,000, I would be done gambling on NFL or if I lost $1,000, I would be done gambling on NFL or if I lost $500, I'd be done gambling on NFL and then divide that over the 16 weeks that we have left in the season or 15 weeks we have left in the season. And so that should be what you would be willing to spend this week, right? Um, and then from there, I would be looking at. But don't forget that also includes that, can, that also includes showdown and stuff like that. You got to factor in. Yeah, I guess it depends on what you play. If you're playing showdown, honestly, I would devote about one percent of your role to showdown. Um, showdown has been uber variant this season, or any season. Showdown's uber variant, and so I would be focusing much more on main slate over showdown in terms of uh, my gambling dollars. I agree. I I hate showdown. I, I legit. I think I'm doing about five percent of my bankroll to showdown, and the rest is going to main slate. Yeah, I think that's that's probably I, a pretty fair allocation. I might even do less than five percent. I think because any given week, I usually put I don't know. 10% of my quote unquote role into main slate. Um, and I'm going to try to keep that number at about 1% for hey, just a, just a question out of curiosity. I don't know how many people we have listening that, 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 that do this, but they have these 153 maxes and they have three different levels. They have the big one, the medium one, and the smaller one, which one do you like and why? I'm a slut for a top field dollars, just like everybody else. I play the big field one. Yeah. Uh, 100,000 up top is uh, really, really nice. Well, it's normally one. 150 up yeah. top, honestly. Yeah, they dropped um, it so this it's normally week. normally at 700K with 150 up top. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they lowered it. Um, but I like that tournament quite a bit. Um, I'm, I play that. I like the $33 five max is another oh, really nice that's, tournament. That's the nuts. This is the nuts. The three-point stance. Love this tournament. Yep. Love this, and then my one fifty set always goes in the nine dollar um, slant. Until that's just because that's just because you want it. Yeah, you, you're you're a you're a romantic slut, is what you are. Okay. It, no, I mean, there's no structure that's better on the tournament, right? In terms yeah, of one fifty maxing good. Uh, tournaments, really like good. that. That's a real sexy payoff. Ten percent to first, ten percent of first to tenth. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. And uh, all placements double your money. So like a min cash still doubles. Gotta love it. 
All right, let's Yo. get to this slate. Uh, this is uh, a new guy. Welcome again, brother. What we're going to do is we're just going to give our, our initial thoughts on what are some games we're kind of looking at. Um, you know, th this slate is about uh, 30 seconds old. So, uh, you know, these are going to be some pretty not hot takes. Just go over the games, maybe uh, start considering them. But what you really need to tune in is Saturday. Uh, Saturday morning, we will put out our our final thoughts where we will talk about specific games that we are attacking, fading, stacks we like, one-offs, all that stuff you need to know. Um, we've been doing very well this season. The Discord has been doing very well too. So come check it out. All right, let's get going, John. Game by game, I think we can. We've already both uh, agreed that the, uh, this first game here on the. By the way, this is Run the Sims. If you're interested, it's the best tool assisted site out there. Go get 20% off with the code DGEN75. D E G E N75. 20% off. Try the weekly package. Try it for one week. Use it for showdown. Use it for main slate. It'll change your fucking uh, perception of DFS football. I stand by it. So does John. Okay. Now we get going. Buffalo and Baltimore. This is going to be the chalkiest game on the slate, right, John? Yeah, 100%. But, hey, real quick, let's jump into a macro look at this slate. If you look, there's only three 4 o'clock games. Ooh, that's nasty. Um, and, again, they're kind of these low total games. Not that we have anything uber um, high on the um, – over-unders in the slate generally there's only a few spots that are um high over-unders but we do only have three late swap options um and there are games that i don't think anyone's going to be particularly interested in playing overall um and so i would just be cognizant just kind of like last week so to me this is like a pretty interesting matchup of week two and week three where in week three we didn't have the best late swap options uh there were like a few one-offs and some value pieces that were there in the four o'clock slate but overall a lot of the like elite options came in that one o'clock slate mm -hmm. and here and then in week two we had just had kind of a gross overall slate where a lot of the um like truly elite offenses were on primetime games off the main slate right. and we have the same thing here we have a lot of offenses that people like to go to missing the main slate um and so really like that first game that you talked about is really that game that ownership is going to i think just absolutely conglomerate around um and it's going to get probably pretty over owned mm -hmm. But also, like, if you look at all the games and you tell me any, if I had to put my money on one game that's going to shoot out, it's probably that one. Um, so early in the week, it's really hard to think about just fading that game. Here's, here's, here's the one thing I could say about this first game. Buffalo. I, the, my one concern I had with them through two weeks is they were so efficient. And I thought, man, if Josh Allen just isn't efficient for one week – he won't like the, he won't be the nuts play right and the funny thing is is he wasn't efficient in week three versus Miami but then he just overcame it with just sheer fucking volume what do you have like 63 passes or some nonsense like that yeah um, they ran 90 plays I mean it, it's almost starting to seem like there's no way that Josh Allen doesn't get there on any given week he either gets there by just being uber efficient or uh, if there's a slate where they're behind he's just having so many opportunities and he's so damn talented that, I, that he just gets there no matter what. Yeah, and both of these teams have banged up secondaries, and so and have shown offensive like ceilings recently mm -hmm. in the last two weeks. Both teams have, so get, I mean the Bills to a lesser extent last week. But, give me two quarterbacks playing better than Lamar and Allen right now. I mean they're they're playing yeah, unbelievable. I mean, they're unbelievable. Lamar was GPP year. winner. You needed Lamar to win GPPs this week, yeah. um, and so I mean and and he was right there last week when uh, when he went off against uh, Tua. So um, yeah, I think the ownership on this game is going to get out of control, but I'm not sure it's not warranted, especially I, if we still have banged up secondaries. I will say this. It is a bit price prohibitive, right? Like they, like they're starting to price these guys up to the point where like, they're not Uber, you know, like you can just multi stack them, right? Like a, if you run a Lamar and uh, a, a, um, Lamar, and of Lamar course you're going to run Andrews and then you run it back with Diggs. I mean, that is a lot of money for three guys and you really yeah, don't you even have Gabe that Davis. much access. Yeah. Save twenty four hundred. Yeah, I would. Yeah, that's who I would probably run. Right, especially coming off the slower week. I see Diggs has a little injury designation here. What happened to him? Lower body. Nah, he's fine. He played uh, ninety. He got some cramps at the end of last week. I think um, he was just. They played ninety games in fucking hot ass Miami. Yeah, that that'll do it for you. So this game super super attackable. If you were going to play one side of the stack, would you be more of the Lamar or would you be more of the uh, uh, Allen side? That's a great question. I think early I in the week, I, I ask great questions. I would probably want to lean the um, Josh Allen side. I think Buffalo's defense, if they can get their pieces back, I think their defense like has a decent shot at shutting down Lamar. Um, so I would lean more on the 
Buffalo side, but really my GPP instincts is to find a way not to play this game mm-hmm. or to stack other quarterbacks and just play small pieces of this game well, and, and try to hope to capture the ceiling that That's way. what I did last week with Bills in Miami. I knew everybody wanted that, so I just went in there and I played Singletary and I played Edmonds and it worked out really well, actually. Like They both got there and I got some good action in that game with a low own piece. I didn't have it in my big lineup there, but I played a lot of that. Over It wasn't just that lineup. I think I played 22 lineups this week and legit 12 of the 22 cashed, which is a crazy high rate for GPPs, and it was because I was just getting very fortunate with just taking these little one-off pieces from the shootout games and those pieces hitting. Yeah, and a lot of the chalk didn't get there last week too, so it that, was a pretty good that's week always overall good for, me. for not play on the chalk and uh, and some of the some value pieces getting there. Um, so yeah, overall, like that last week was a good GPP week. I think this is going to be another good GPP week, and it what it's going to probably take. And I'm so obviously we're just digesting this late for the first time, but I think. Like my initial read on this is like it's going to take getting over not playing that Buffalo Baltimore game mm-hmm. and just finding um, other games. And there's a couple others like on my first read through the slate that I like um, a little bit. So let's go. Last question. Mark Andrews, uh, 7,100, the more I think about it, is actually pretty reasonable based on his production so far this year. Is there a chance that Mark Andrews is tight end one this year? Oh, there's more than a chance he's getting elite usage in an offense that's like humming pretty well. Um, he's like tight end one, wide receiver one, kind of all rolled into one. He's a downfield target. He's an end zone target. Um, I don't think you could really hope for more out of Mark Andrews. Um, and he's got so, huge uh, biceps. You have to factor that in somewhere. The guy's got the. <laughs> you know, I love a grown ass man. <laughs> he's a grown ass man. I Hey, he's an OU boy. So I've been watching him for a long time. And those biceps were not that big in college. He was a little doughy in college. Now he's fucking chiseled like a fucking greek statue so to, to your point on andrews this is a kind of like what we talked about in week two this is a week where we don't have um we don't have kelsey on the slate right we don't have um i guess there really hasn't been any other than Pitts and kelsey or i'm sorry kelsey and andrews there really haven't been any other elite elite tight end options mm-hmm. so without kelsey on the slate andrews is your elite ceiling option at the tight end position this was just what like week two where I played 40 or 50% Andrews because if he hits a ceiling score and God, he almost got there. I think he had 28 or so 27, something like that right. and had another end zone option. So he could have put up 30 something. And at that point, like the slate's broken, you either played Andrews or you don't, you don't win yep. um, because no one else can get close to the tight end position. Those onesies, if you get a ceiling score that no one gets within 15 points of, it's just over. Um, so I think Andrews is that option again this week. And I got a, so- I got a sneaky tight end. We'll talk about here in a couple games. I, I don't know how sneaky he'll be, but he's somebody I like. All right, let's move on. I got to tell you, if, you, if, if you've been watching this show, you know one thing. I have a soft spot for Trevor Lawrence. And mm-hmm. once again, here we go. A nice high total, 48 and a half with Jacksonville versus Philadelphia. Jacksonville's probably going to be in a script where they're going to be behind. They're going to be playing a very, very efficient Eagles offense that you have to assume is going to score points in the first half. It seems like to me Trevor Lawrence is going to be in a game where he is going to be passing the ball around a lot, playing from behind, and he is playing like a different dude this year. He is, he just gets better every week. Uh, I think that's true about Lawrence, but you know who gets better every week is Jalen Hurts. I think that oh. dude may be legit. But they're finally starting to price him, right? Like once you get over 8000 for a quarterback, you better be committed to that mother father. Yeah, I mean, he is up there with the big dogs, as he should be. Yeah, he's, um, he's, I like right now, he's the, he's the MVP. Him and Josh Allen and Lamar, those are like the top three MVP candidates without question well, right now, right? Lamar is is doing his best to put himself in that conversation. He, I I regret fading Lamar badly last week. Yeah, um, You knew better. Yeah, but you knew better, game, John. I, I did. It's like, so same thing with Derrick Henry, right? And I even said it on the show. Like, when I play Derrick Henry, it's when he's low-owned. And last mm-hmm. week, Big dog was going to be low owned and I just didn't get there. Uh, I wanted to play Dalvin. I wanted to play some other guys and fuck, you should play the big dog when he's going to be low owned. You should That's fade the big dog when he's going to be high owned, but you should play the big dog when he's going to be low owned. Right. Look at that. Not even following um, your own rules. How can we teach people if you can't even follow your own damn rules? It's hard, right? You can only play so many guys. You yeah. can't play everyone or your lineups just get so spread that you're not giving yourself a chance to you're win. Just, you're and just so, paying the rake at that point when you kind of play everybody. Yeah, you got to make decisions and, uh, I'm okay to lose weeks. I'm not, I'm like, I, I don't like, we've talked about my record from last season. It was overall positive, but I had a lot of losing weeks and like, that's part of GPP life. And if you're not afraid to, or if you're too afraid to lose, like don't 
fucking play GPPs because mm-hmm. you're going to have a bad time. Yeah, come. Um, <laughs> you want to play it safe? Just just come play college football with a big guy and just play cash lineups. Way easier. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So hey, real quick on this game, I think Philly's defense has a legit chance to shut down Jacksonville. I think people think this may be a shootout, mm-hmm. but I think this could also just be a fucking beatdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, Philly's defense has looked legit. They have they bottled up that Washington team that we all thought had a, an offense. Now look, it's Carson Wentz. Like the Commanders may be a total fraud, but they made him look absolutely inefficient and terrible so could they do the same thing to jacksonville here absolutely and in that case is this a game i want to stack absolutely not um if you're telling me this is like a 28 to 7 game like i'm probably good to just take either pieces of the philly side or to pass completely if you were going to stack hurts are you are you double stacking him or is this a single stack kind of small field yes big field no and i think that's like in my you know that um my king of the beach tournament that i want to see too is why i double stacked him in that Mm -hmm. is i think it's fine because in small fields i'm basically saying like this is the game that's going to shoot out it's going to be the best in game environment and i'm going to capture the pieces of it but in big fields you need them to hit like truly elite ceilings for those guys and hurts i think hits his truly elite ceiling when he has some rushing opportunities into the end zone um and not necessarily bringing along two wide receivers so i probably would be single stacking him in big fields so are you shit are you shitting on my dreams of getting back to my trevor lawrence stacks is that what you're doing right now because that's what it sounds like you're doing uh, no, I mean, I think if you think this game can, if you think Jacksonville can carry in this game, I think I actually much prefer the Lawrence side of the stacks. Um, but I think there's a real possibility that Philly's defense uh, brings the pressure and Lawrence has a regression game. How dare you? All right. Okay. Well, hey, we're just throwing some ideas around. So let's get to a game that I can throw some ideas. First of all, is, is fucking Zach Wilson ever going to come back? Like, what's his ETA to return? I, I, they keep saying they would make an announcement in September, and I have not seen an announcement. I'm guessing a lot of what that is is Joe Flacco has looked pretty decent, and there's really no pressure to bring him back. Man, I really need him back. I got some sick best ball teams where he's my backup quarterback. <laughs> I need his ass in there. So, <laughs> um, all right, so this game right here, uh, I got to tell you, Deontay Johnson, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but he's kind of becoming a usage monster, and I feel like at 6,000, he has 30-point weeks in him, especially in a sneaky game like this at home. Um I, I I would never stack this game, and I really don't like any of the Jets to bring it back with. I guess Elijah Moore maybe, but like a one-off Deontay Johnson, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, actually doesn't make me vomit in my mouth. So when I looked at this game, I think my favorite pieces of this game are Brees Hall and the Jets defense. What about Brees Hall makes you <laughs> – what, what is Brees – did he just have another good game? I didn't. I didn't even notice him. He's I think he's yeah, he's slowly eating up the uh, the target shares there, and if they're going to play from ahead, he will be the one that's doing it. I you think, think the, so. You got the Jets playing from ahead when they're three and a half point dogs. If I'm playing them with the Jets defense, yeah. Okay. If I'm playing Jets defense and Brees, I think that's a pretty good correlation in this game. You're just saying, but I also don't mind. You're just DeAndre. saying Mitch Trubisky's a fucking loser, is what you're saying. That dude's going to lose his job. He's well, hey, football. How about this? How about Brees Hall, Jets defense? run it back with uh, Deontay Johnson. They're coming from behind, you know, a uh, pick six early in the game. It's the fourth quarter. They're just desperation passing, and he gets there with 10 catches, 107 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, that can absolutely work. I just, in main slate, don't play players against my defense. And, I mean, that's, like, possibly elite because in your situation, I think you could probably do it with a wide receiver. I probably wouldn't do it with any other position but a wide receiver but or tight end. Yeah. Um, it's definitely never it. against I mean, a running And that back. may be an oversight on mine, but I, I just – it's just not something I, do. I actually like field. running it against my wide receivers and sometimes even a quarterback. I will never run it against a running back because they're just maybe like a third down running back, a guy that'll catch like dump offs and stuff, but never the primary running back because there's no way my defense is probably going to be doing well. And they're and the dudes running the ball for the other team. Right. Like, it's just those yeah, two things are very Deontay, uncorrelated. If you're playing Deontay, I probably prefer to play Michael Carter and play that the Jets are from behind in that game. I say, uh, yeah, I would play it the other way. I play. I like your Brees Hall and the Jets, and they control this game because Mitch Trubisky fucking sucks. And then uh, their desperation pass, and Deontay gets there uh, with garbage time catches and a touchdown. That's how I play. If you're going to spend six k on Deontay Johnson, let me sell you on a guy in this next game at sixty one hundred dollars. Deal. Because this game, this when I saw this over under, I said, "What the fuck is this? A typo? Cleveland and Atlanta have a fifty point total. Get the fuck out of here." All right. Okay, I lied. He's sixty three hundred, but Amari Cooper's been nuts this week. Oh my God, you're so gross. Why? Sixty three hundred. He's been getting sixty three hundred. Insane volume. Mm. We're gonna put him inside the dome in Atlanta. Oh, give me all the Amari and or all the Nick Chubb. I will be playing Amari and Nick Chubb not together, but in so many of my lineups. 
Can we? All right, I I will can I will concur with that point. I will not roast you publicly here if you will agree that your run back can be Kyle Pitts. Yeah, a hundred percent. We saw Pitts get there with thirteen points last week without a touchdown. If Homeboy can ever get in the end zone and they start realizing that that dude should be their end zone option, Homeboy's going to bust off a series of twenty five point games. Um, yep. Like the Falcons are just misusing that poor man. Um, so yeah, no, he's going to have a game. He had thirteen. I think he had thirteen and a half last week without getting in the end zone. So um, that just tells you. Here's my initial instincts on this game. There's no way I will run this game as my primary stack, but I bet I'm going to have a ton of lineups where my secondary stack, a little correlation uh, mini stack, will be from this game. So I'll do you one better. I, I may play Jacoby Brissett, uh, Amari Cooper stacks. You were disgusting. Um, you were disgusting. Dude, Jacoby looked good the other night. Atlanta looks god awful. You know, we don't have a lot of value options here. Look at I, the, hey, I, I hey, hey, hey. Out. I don't know if you can see my screen, but I got the pace of play so far this season. If you would have told me that the Cleveland Browns would be the sixth fastest paced team in the NFL, I would have given you 100 bucks. I'd be like, there's not a chance in hell. I gave you 10 to 1. And here they are averaging 70 plays a game. So if they really are going to have 70 plays a game, I actually am not even that unopposed to a Brissette, Chubb, Cooper stack. That's a weird stack. Nah, I got a better one. Drop it on me, big guy. Brissette, Cooper, Ninjoku. I knew you were going to say Ninjoku. I mean, 3,700 for what he's, uh, how he's looking. Like, he's really established himself as the clear tight end pass catcher there. That is attractive. But here's the question. If I'm going to run Ninjoku, who's my run back? Are you running back with Patterson? Because I'm not no, going to run London. a double tight end. Not a chance I'm running it back with Pitts. London's usage has been awesome. He's 6,100? I, like I want to keep betting on these rookies, right? All you these want a guys rookie wide receiver. Up. A rookie wide receiver at 6,100 that has Marcus Mariota passing him the ball. That's what you want? Yeah. Jesus, yeah, you're definitely. Gross. You're gross. Well, you need a run back because I think you need you need Brissett to hit a ceiling. And I mean, like while they can beat him down, it's not going to be with Brissett and Njoku and Cooper if they're beating him down. So I do need a bring back, right? And so I think Patterson is a fine bring back. I think mm -hmm. that's like a viable option. Uh, but I think the Cleveland line is pretty legit. And so I think I'd rather gamble on volume going to Drake London or you could double tight end and volume to Pitts. Let's see. Where's Kareem Hunt? Oh, there he is. He's way up there. All right. Uh, yeah, that's a good game. That's a good game. And I, I just I cannot believe people are going to convince themselves to stack that game with those quarterbacks. So I think that's a way to get uh, maybe a sneaky shootout game that not a lot of people will be on. Let's move over to Washington and Dallas. Hot, hot, hot takes here because I think uh, Dallas, you know, like the, the Cooper Rush is better than I thought he was, but he's still there's just no chance that they're ever going to be an elite offense until Dak gets back. Um, and then Washington, fuck, they suck. God, they suck. And Carson Wentz is so bad. He might be the worst starting quarterback in the NFL. Mm, yeah, I mean, that might be true. Um, yeah, I actually think Dallas' defense is probably, I don't know what they're priced at, but Dallas' defense is probably a pretty good play. 3,500, uh, not a chance. Not a Ooh, chance, Bob. Yeah, too expensive. I probably don't lump. This is probably just a pass game for me completely. How about Zeke? And you need some pass games, right? Zeke, Zeke at 6,100? Yeah, his volume's good. I mean, yeah. that's, that's 6,100 in a game where I think they're going to be ahead. Uh, he, I, I don't know this, but this is just anecdotally, he seems to score a lot better at home than he does on the road. So there's that also. I This is a script where they're oh, going to be ahead. Did you see Pollard last night? He just looks better. He, he is. Gets he's space, he's he definitively a better player than Zeke. He is. He just busts off these like 46 yard runs, and then they're like, yep. all right, bring Get Zeke the fuck in out. for yep. three. Yeah, and the, but I will say Tony going? Pollard. Tony Pollard at six thousand. I mean, that's that's I I can't do that. I I hate playing the backup. Brother. It's the same thing with Kareem Hunt. I know that they are good enough to get there at six thousand, but man, it, they got to be just so perfectly efficient. I hate it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you on that one. This is probably just a pass game for me. Yeah, Kareem Hunt, Tony Pollard, love those kind of guys in showdown. But on a main slate where I have so many other options, I can't pay six thousand dollars for a guy that's only going to play forty percent of the snaps. I can't do it, Bob. Can't do it. Yep. All right. So this Any next game has got some injury concerns. Uh, all right. You're ready uh, to jump into it. This is another really good one. Sounds Which, like by the way, Seattle with a 50 point ways. total. Seattle, 50 point total. Another one of those ones that blew my mind when I saw it. What is Seattle? You'll see this. You'll see this over under come down. If you want to bet this under, I, I would bet this now. If you want to take it, Seattle's this, averaging 55 plays a game. 55 plays a game. That is horrific. Third lowest yeah, in the NFL. I'm guessing this will be 46 points or so by kickoff because you're going to get Swift announced out. You're going to get Amon Ra likely announced out with his angle injury. Ooh, it sounds I didn't like know about it. I didn't even injury. know about Amon Ra. Yeah, it sounds like it's not a long-term injury. They've, they've done their x-rays and such, and it uh, sounds like he's like 
likely or semi likely to miss this week. Um, definitely not guaranteed to miss this week, which is thankful um, that it's not going to be a long term injury. But um, I would be concerned about a Monra status. And so if we get those two like confirmed out, I think Swift's almost assuredly out for at least mm-hmm. a couple weeks. That's, that, yeah, um, I saw that too. And so I think the over under will come down here. I mean, I know we love to play teams against this Detroit offense, but do you really want to play Geno Smith against this Detroit offense? I know I wanted to play DK last week against Arizona. Um, but I think if Detroit's going to have some of its offensive weapons limited, that makes me like this or out likely that makes me like this game a lot less because Mm -hmm. I think Seattle would ideally grind the ball. And if they're going to be able to keep it close, uh, this is like a pretty gross under game to me. I will tell you, I, a lot of times when studs are going to be out, I really like to attack those games because that usage is going to get spread around. But with a team like Detroit, if they're two, I mean, to me, definitively best offensive players are out. I feel like you got to just worry about like the efficiency of the offense, right? To the point that like you, it's not going to matter that the usage is getting passed around if the offense fucking sucks. And I think it will suck without Swift and Amon Ra. Yeah, I mean, Amon Ra has shown that he is like a true alpha in this league. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you have to consider him up there in like the top, I don't know, eight wide receivers in the league, five right. wide receivers in the league. So uh, that's a big loss. Yeah, I, it, which sucks because initially I was like, wow, if this game's really going to have a 50-point total, this could be my one that I stacked. But I didn't know about the Amon Ra thing. That, that, that's, that's a pretty big deterrent for me. Um, yep. So, uh, and, and you know what? I even kind of like some of these Seattle uh, runbacks in the Dome, right? Um, I, yeah, I, would, I would even be very warm to a Lockett uh, or Metcalf this week, and normally I shit on those guys. Uh, that's part of my brand. But if it was going to be a shootout-type game, I would love to run it back with Lockett or Metcalf. Yep, I just uh, this is a one to monitor injury situation, and uh, so if if Amon Ra plays, if Amon Ra plays, we're open to this game. But if not, if him and Swift are both out, we're gonna swiftly get the fuck off of it. That's I think my initial take. Yep. Yeah, I think I. Nice pun. It's Tuesday morning. You can probably tell by how fucking tired I look. Okay, we're just we're just tossing ideas around. Okay, we we got four days to chew on this shit. All right, Chargers in Houston, man. What do you got here? Uh, I don't mind the Chargers side of the ball. If Herbert's going to give another week to heal up a little bit, um, we saw him grit through it last week. So if, Her- if Herbert's going to be good to go, I don't actually mind the Chargers side of the ball. Um, Houston's playing yeah. really. Houston's playing very slow this year. Only sixty-one plays a game. Yeah, but then, you can't play really slow when you're down. And then the Chargers are playing sixty-five. So uh, yeah, you yeah. Can't, can't play slow when you're down. Chargers are a team that will push pace. Um, so I'm. I think this is like a sneaky shootout game if Houston could hold their now, own. Which is I see, up. I see Eckler really starting to move up the optimizer rate here on Run the Sims. Is he? Is are they finally starting to ride their horsey now? Is that why his uh, optimizer rates up? I didn't even really after those first two weeks where his usage was so low. I kind of just like took him off my radar. Uh, I have to go back and look at his usage last week. I'm guessing it was probably higher because it's Herbert needed to mo- do more dump offs and they needed to rely on him more. Right. Is there? But Eckler's talked about his. Like even on his own show about fantasy usage, like elite guys getting used less early because they don't play the preseason, so they're not quite at game speed ready. Right. And that you'll see like veterans get their usage just continually to uptick as the season goes on. Any word so, on any word on Keenan say. Allen? Is he? I, I feel I kind of want him back. I, I I want I want the Chargers to have all their weapons. Yeah, I, I don't know his status, and it's one you'll have to just keep monitoring throughout the week. But Allen, like, coming into the season was someone I was pretty concerned about, right? You start to get a little bit of age on some of these guys, um, and injuries take longer to come back from. Injuries are more frequent. Uh, so, um, I, yeah, yeah I Allen's will tell you, sort of fitting my the worries. One, the one piece of this game that's the most attractive to me, Brandon Cooks. Like, give me some Cooks. Like, I, there's a chance he'll get three points, but he also – this just strikes me as the perfect kind of game where he's going to have one of his three weeks a year where he gets over 30. And at 5,800, I'm willing to roll the dice because that is a, a very fair price on a guy that has monster upside. Yeah, he's getting an elite target share on his team. And if you're playing uh, the Chargers stacks, I think he's like the elite bring back option. Absolutely. And I would love I, – I, if I feel like Eckler's going to get the usage because, you know, they're still trying to be conservative with Herbert. I don't mind an Eckler-Cooks mini stack to run it back with. Yeah, I'll be wanting to see what the reports are on Herbert going through the week. I know, like, you know, broken cartilage or bruised cartilage, I don't know what the fuck his actual rib injury is, is like a fairly long – not long-term, but several-week recovery period. So right. um, if he's still limited in practice and isn't uh, as mobile, that's, I'll probably just avoid that game. Gotcha. All right, let's move on. Tennessee and Indianapolis, couple like very disappointing teams so far this year. Uh, not just from their record, but like from a fantasy standpoint, right? 
So, uh, what are your initial thoughts on this game? Because mine is vomit in my mouth. I just feel like Matt yeah, Ryan has... Yeah, the pace on both these guys. I'm guessing these two, these are both bottom 20 teams. Let's see. Uh, who are we looking at? Tennessee is 27th. And Indianapolis, shockingly enough, is number 8. They're averaging 6. Yeah, they've been trailing. Out. That's, like, noisy. That's not... Yeah. I, I wouldn't yeah, actually that's, think... That's not indicative of who they are, right? That's, yeah. the, that's just game That's indicative dependent. of them trailing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm just wondering if Matt Ryan is so bad, he's just, like, destroying the fantasy upside of Taylor and Pittman. Um, I don't think he's – I mean, he is bad, but I don't think he's that bad that he's killing their upside. I think overall this team has just gotten behind. Their defense has not carried the weight, and so they've gotten behind, which has put Taylor outside of his normal – like, they want to run the ball on first and second down. Um, and when you're trailing, it's really hard to run the ball uh, on first and hey, second down all the time. So. Is Shaq Leonard going to be back this week? Because I know that like when he's out, teams run the ball against Indianapolis so much better than when he's in. And so like yeah, if he's that, out, that makes Derrick Henry like probably a low owned Derrick Henry. I got to imagine pr- pretty appetizing this week. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what ownership says if people are going to chase that Derrick Henry uh, a game winning performance last week, or if people are going to go off. But um, how many points did he yeah. have last week? You keep talking. I know he had a good game, but I didn't think he had more than 30, did he? Uh, I don't remember his final fantasy score. He had 143 yards, a touchdown. And he had some pass. He was catching the ball a lot, which is what was shocking yeah. me. I think he had, uh, yeah, so I, w- I would guess he got close to that 30 number. I'd, I'd have to go back and look. But I just know he was in, like, the main GPP winning lineups and stuff. I think he was the winning back. Does uh, any, of these Tennessee, any of these Tennessee wide receivers interest you at all? Man, I'm still willing to gamble on Traylon Burks' talent. Mm-hmm. He had an off. He has, his target share was down last week, but um, I mean, he's probably the number one there right now. So, yeah. and 4700 is uh, very affordable. Yeah, and I think if you want to play uh, stacks, like if you want to play JT and Traylon Burks, I don't mind that correlation. Gotcha. All right, let's move over to uh, Chicago and the Giants. I think, without question, the grossest game on the slate. Um, Thirty-eight uh, and a half. Washington points Dallas would like to have a word with you, sir. That's a that totals four points higher. How dare you? How dare you? Okay, um, it, 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 Saquon at eight thousand. Jesus, he's moved right on up out of value to elite status with that salary. Um, man, I, d- d- sell me on anybody, please. I'll shit on him. I want absolutely none of this game. Not even, not even Daniel Jones finally finds it. No, I think the only piece in this game I might play is if I needed uber salary relief, I may play. Tanner Hudson or uh, Bellinger at uh, yeah at the yeah. low price. Well, good. We'll the agree line. on that. Fuck that game. Let's move to the afternoon the slate. Sucks. To uh, ca- uh, Arizona, Carolina. Your 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 Panthers. If you don't know, John Galt lives there with the Panthers. So uh, what uh, what's the uh, what's the play here, man? What's uh, I, I I truly think that both these teams really suck, and it hurts me because it's my two favorite quarterbacks in the NFL. Both a couple OU boys, but fuck, I think Cliff Kingsbury is destroying mm-hmm. Arizona, and I just Baker, man. That offense just ain't clicking. I'm gonna blame it on uh, what uh, what Matt Rule is the coach, right? So fuck him. Yeah, Matt Rule sucks as a coach. Yeah. He um, doesn't rule. Yeah, this is like who, which coach can fuck up less in this game? Yep. Uh, like I want Christian McCaffrey to be a thing. He is still like the guy in Carolina, and you don't have a lot of backs that are the guy, and so you really want CMC to be a thing, especially against this Arizona defense that like has shown they suck. So, like, I still – I mean, it's early in the week. So, 8700 for CMC. He was 8800 last week. He didn't Ver- get a discount. I think that's a very fair price for him. It is, yeah, right? I mean, much lower on CMC, and he becomes an auto play. So, CMC is someone I'd like to get to. On the other side of the ball, like, I'm pretty interested in James Conner at 6300 mm-hmm. Um, Like, I don't think you play those two together. I pretty much never play two running backs from the same game. I think it just yep. has serious pace concerns. Yep. But um, I think either side of that is probably okay. Um what about Ertz, like, man? Like it's like no one else exists for the Cardinals when they get to the red zone. It's like Zach Ertz or nobody, and he fucking gets twenty-seven red zone targets and catches one or two of them every week. And the Panthers are bad versus tight ends, so I think Ertz is a fine play. Um, part of me really wants a Kyler stack to be a thing still. Who like, would you stack him with though? Like I, I that's the oh, problem. Ertz, Ertz or Brown, I think that's fine. You can't. You don't want a double stack. Um, well, so what's interesting is Kyler threw his highest pass volume, uh, I think of his career last week. I think he threw like 47 passes or something last week. Um, so what was the game script? I don't even remember the Cardinals game. Were they behind? What was going on? Uh, well, why you gotta put me on the spot with shit? Uh, I'm just trying to, I, <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I don't even remember there. if they won. 
Like who the fuck? Can I was at the play? golf tournament. God, you gotta put me on the spot with things. Whatever. Who cares? Follow on my phone. They can fucking um, look it up. Hey, new guy, go look no, it up on no, your phone. No, your mother father. They played the Rams. Okay. Oh yeah, they were getting their asses kicked. Um, That's why he passed. They so did much. get their ass kicked, um, but he threw a shitload of passes and they uh, and completed twelve of them. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, but the volume's there, and the Panthers are worse than the Browns, so, or worse than the uh, uh, Rams. So. Uh, all right. Uh, how about this one? New England, Green Bay. We got two games left. Uh, sell me on somebody here. This just screams like an Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon type game. Dude, AR twelve actually is like extremely efficient. My concern is that the team doesn't want to let uh, him cook, right? So, I think they are happy to let him dominate the first half of the game, and then once they have a lead, they're going to just grind it out. So, Mac Jones is now done. It sounds like uh, for at least a couple weeks, if not the season. Wow. Um, and I so didn't, didn't, uh, New England's going to have to figure out what they're going to do at quarterback this week. I assume you're going to pay 4100 for the Packers defense, right? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a no for me, dog. I don't think you could ever pay 4100 for a defense. Dude, Ramondre, uh, hey, Ramondre yeah. really started to look good last week. Man, he was really I believe to you will out, remember man. that I told you you should be playing him. Well, I mean, he didn't get there, but I'm just saying he started to look good. So don't pat yourself on the back too hard, big guy. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, but yeah, no, I actually don't like pretty much any of this game. I think uh, Aaron Rodgers is a good first half quarterback. And if we were playing first half DFS, I think he's viable. Mm-hmm. But I think they run away with this game and he just hands it off for the whole second half. And yeah. so uh, give me the running backs, if anything, in this game. Yeah. A- Aaron Jones and Dylan, they're, d- they're pretty expensive. Like neither of them are very cheap. Um, so you'd really have to buy into that script that they're ahead and they're just pounding it. Um, but man, Aaron Jones got to get a lot to pay off 7,500. Um, and uh, I just don't know if this game will get pushed enough that he would really get there enough. Because if you think, oh, well, he could bust some long touchdown runs, don't forget, Dylan's getting most of the carries. Yep. So I'm probably passing on this game. The next one, the last 4 o'clock game, I think basically in terms of what I'm going to be building, I'm going to have this game as my 4 o'clock pivot game. And then if the ownership looks like it'll be high, my plans will be to pivot to the Carolina. No one's going to play this game, bro. 44 and a half point total. People are just convinced. The narrative is the uh, Broncos uh, can't be saved. That's that's the narrative sure about that. This game will not be popular. I just I know it. I know it won't be popular. So I'm not sure Russ is a good quarterback anymore. I don't think so either. But I believe he still has some good games left in him, and I'm very interested in stacking this game because I like both sides. I like the stacks on both sides, and I like the runbacks on both sides. And it's going to be low owned. There you go. Is that is that a take yeah. or what? No, I think that's totally fair. I think Devonte Adams at 8,300 is more than fair. Um, I think Sutton and Judy are both like pretty viable on the other side of the ball. Um, but man, this is just a. I just will a say the game. biggest deterrent about this game is everybody seems pretty fairly priced. Like Devonte is not cheap. Uh, f- fucking Russell Wilson's definitely not cheap. I, I mean, I guess if you went with a Car Waller stack. Uh, and then you could go with Devontae. That's a pretty interesting stack. Bring it back with Javante Williams. Ooh. Man, Waller's usage has been so frustrating. Yeah. Um, he's just not getting the targets. Even last week, like, that was part of my theorem on not playing Max Hollins was that, like, the guys that are already in your offense should see an expanded role. And I understand Max Hollins has been running routes out there, but he's a set special teams or he wasn't involved in the offense. He, I mean, he, he was running routes, but he was like a wind sprint guy. He wasn't getting targeted. So, like, the thought on not playing him was that, look, the target share is just going to be absorbed by Adams. We saw him do 42% in week one. Why can't he just do 40-whatever percent this week? And then why can't Waller become more involved? And, like, why does this Mac Collins guy need to fucking catch all the touchdowns? Um, which is what ended up happening. But it, like, very easily could have played out that the two studs got more usage. But Waller only got saw five targets. So, right. like... Did he not spend the offseason working out? Is he not getting separate? I'm not sure, like, what's going on with Waller. But, like, in a game where he should have seen an uptick in usage, for him not to is pretty concerning in my book. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you, we're not doing any final thoughts because these are all just kind of our initial thoughts. We'll give all the good stuff on Saturday, which, by the way, if you want, if you like the cut of me and John's jib, just so you know, I have a I have a Discord, and we do way more content over there. It's connected to this Patreon. Come check it out. It'll be in the link. We're almost to 300 people. It's growing like fucking crazy over there. A lot of good screenshots. Um, we will be back uh, Thursday for Thursday Night Football and, of course, Saturday for our final week-long preview. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been the Touchdown Hoedown, and you know we'll be back Saturday. I hope to see you again. I hope you enjoy my outro.